Hello, all my JavaScript friends. This is the Virtual aka Mike Smith, and this is Fun with JavaScript, our jigsaw puzzle game. This video is going to cover patterns, and the pattern is what took me an entire month to figure out. But once I got it all figured out, everything started falling into place like pieces of a puzzle. Pun intended. So, first of all, what is a pattern? Well, basically, a pattern is, is a class that basically specifies how the pieces are going to be cut out and how the pieces are going to be put together. Because from a puzzle point of view, that's what's the most important thing. How many pieces of the puzzle do I have and how do they fit together? Because the fact of the matter is the shape of the puzzles, it couldn't care less. The pieces themselves, they couldn't care less what shape they are. The pattern, however, does care the shape about the shape of the pieces and it does care how many pieces are going to be in the puzzle and it does care how the pieces get put together. So that's its primary job. That also allows me to be able to say, okay, if I've got a puzzle with a particular image and I want to switch from, oh, 16 pieces to 42 pieces and maybe have them triangular, tri triangulars, <laughs> maybe have them triangles instead of squares, I can go ahead and do that just by inserting a new pattern because the puzzle could not care less. So let's get working on that and start going. First thing I want to do before I do anything else is I noticed that when I brought up my dev server that says, hey, you know, I'm having problems trying to find jigsawpuzzle.js because I realized that my jigsaw puzzle is under JS and not just under source. So let's move that first before we do anything else. And I think that will kind of help fix the situation. And when I control F5, binga banga bonga, there we go. Everything pretty much is ready to go, except for my icon there. You can see with the, uh, we're missing the icon, but I don't care about that. So we got all that ready to go. Let's put the pattern in. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a new directory under classes called pattern because I can have more than one pattern eventually. And then I'm gonna create a base pattern class. So let's do that. That'd be pattern.js. And let's pop something in there. Export default class pattern. And that's all we're going to put into the pattern. For now, what I have done is that the pattern that I'm going to use as my demonstration, which cuts 16 pieces, all pieces square, four rows by four columns, will have all the code into it. Once I start ref doing the refactoring, which is part number two of, of all of, of this entire series, we're basically still on part number one, basically a kind of a proof of concept, uh, that will eventually evolve to where this pattern class will contain everything that is common to all of the different patterns. And then the individual patterns will have you know, things that are specific to them, like, you know, 16 pieces, square, things like that. For now, we're just going to keep it like that. So our particular pattern is going to be a pattern called 16 square. So as you can see within the jigsaw puzzle, when we actually tell it to uh, set the particular pattern on the on the uh, for, for the puzzle itself, this is in our jigsawpuzzle.javascript. This is the main controller. Uh, we're going to have a class called cut 16 square. So this cut 16 square is basically something I have developed, which will cut 16 pieces, each one of them square, four rows by four columns. So we're going to create a we're going to create a um, JavaScript file underneath pattern called surprise surprise cut 16 square. You know that shocks you. Alrighty, well let's throw some code in there and let's start taking a look at it and see what we can do about it. Alrighty, so let's throw some code in there and just see what happens. And through the magic of television, here we are. This is all of our code. I have 16 different pieces. The cut is called a square. No big deal there. So what happens, graphic puzzle is eventually when we, well, let's actually go with jigsaw puzzle. When jigsaw puzzle, after it sets the pattern, it's going to call a cut. And so graphics puzzle is going to say, okay, I need to cut. So it's going to get into its cut method and it's going to call cut on the pattern itself. And what's going to be returned are the different pieces. So the first method that is extraordinarily important is that each of the patterns is going to have to tell them how to cut out the pieces. And this is a lot of code here that will eventually return pieces, but it's actually fairly easy to fairly easy to figure out. Uh, basically what we do here is we figure out the number of rows and number of columns. In my case, it's going to be four rows and four columns. I create all of the 
individual vertices automatically for the uh, for the puzzle. In this case, there's 25 vertices. Uh, if you take a if we go back to the original handwritten the uh, hand, handwritten piece piece of paper I did where we figured out what all the vertices were, you'll notice there's 25 different vertices. So these are going to be the unique vertices that are going to represent all the vertices in my puzzle. And then it's just a simple little for loop. No big deal there. I create the uh, I create the canvas that we're going to have. I'm going to I'm going to create the canvas back. Excuse me. I'm going to create a canvas and temporarily place the image that we have into that canvas. And the reason I'm doing that is that as I create the graphics piece, I'm going to pass it the image. I'm going to pass it the image itself into the uh, graphics piece to be able then for graphics piece to be able to extract that particular image from our from this particular from this image itself. So this entire this entire thing here is that I've taken the I've created my own little canvas here, which has which which then cuts out the picture of out of the uh, main image, depending upon where it is, you know, row and column location I have so that I can get past the graphic image. Here's where I create the four different vertices. And the, the four different vertices, basically, this is the uh, this is basically that vertex info. I have the vertex ID, which is the IDs that we created right upside here, same IDs that are right there, plus the top and left and relative top and relative right of this particular uh, can, of this particular vertices. And that also gets passed into the graphics piece. So now the graphics piece will not only have the image that it can then put into its own canvas element, but I also have the vertex info for the uh, width for, for the uh, piece itself. And that will then allow me later on to figure out how to get everything connected together. And then uh, all this uh, does right here is just gets the information, pushes the uh, pushes the, this basically gets all the vertex information and pushes that particular piece into the vertex data. And this vertex, this, I'm sorry, this vertex, vertices right here. So this vertices is a set for each of the different uh, vertice, verte, vertexes that ha will have an array of, of uh, pieces that this vertex is associated with. And so that will allow me to not have to sit there and if I'm dropping a piece that has four vertices in it, I don't have to search the entire puzzle for all the different vertices. I will just search any of the puzzle pieces that happen to be within this particular vertex ID. That's just going to save a lot of time. It scales a lot better that way too. So if I had 16 pieces or 32 pieces or a thousand pieces, it's just going to scale a whole heck of a lot better knowing that when I drop a piece, I only have to search any pieces that are associated with the, any of the vertexes that are contained within that piece. Then I just push that to the array and return the array. So what comes back to graphics puzzle is the number of or all the different pieces and these are graphic pieces and this in my case is going to be 16 different pieces so graphics puzzle now has come in come in and said hey pattern give me your pieces and the pattern you know cut out your pieces and give them to me so the pattern comes out and says okay 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 i gotta do that let's cut the pieces and let's uh, do everything we have to do and let's return the pieces so the cut method within the pattern is responsible for cutting out all the individual pieces in whatever format they happen to be in assigning all the different vertexes to all those different pieces and returning back to the puzzle all the pieces that are associated with the puzzle so all the puzzle have to worry, has to worry about when we get the cut is i've got a bunch of graphics pieces that start with a span that i can now then guess what append to my board and that gets the graphics pieces on the board easy no big deal there and then of course we have the event listener for the mouse down so when we start the mouse down we do the drops and all that kind of fun stuff uh the shuffling is taken care of by the graphics puzzle but that doesn't have anything to do with the pattern so method number one that's really important is how do we cut out the pieces and the patterns are responsible for cutting out the pieces number two is how do we find the matching pieces so i have now i'm now in graphics puzzle and i have uh i've done my mouse down and i've now i'm now dragging my my piece all over the board and that's what the do drag over is and so i let go of the mouse button and it does the drop and so there's the do drop the do drop in that does the actual drop so What's important is once we figure out what piece has been dropped, and that is basically because of uh, what, once we once we 
we know a piece has been dropped, obviously, because we got we got it we got it, we got a variable called piece in motion, so we know what piece has been dropped. We take a look at that piece and we say, "Hey, pattern, find me all the matching pieces that are associated with this piece." And so that's part number two of what's very important for the pattern. The pattern now has to determine, okay, what are the matching pieces? And this is how it actually works. Now, I did kind of cheat here a little bit. I just want to check and make sure matches. Yeah, yeah, yeah I did kind of cheat here just a little bit. In which case, basically what I did here is this finds the matching pieces and there could be multiple matching pieces. But in my particular case here, I just wanted to find the very first one that matched. You could do it that way or you can do all the matching pieces. So this name actually should have probably been find first matching piece instead of find matching pieces. But hey, that's just the way it goes. So this finds the first matching piece and will and we'll return a, a variable called matches, which has the first matching piece in it and then the relative shifts. And those relative shifts are going to be very important to be able to tell us, you know, you know where the piece is in relationship to all the other pieces. And so how do we do that? Well, we take a look at each vertex off of the piece. We get that vertex, we get all the pieces that are associated with that particular vertex from the vertices set. Again, remember when we did the cut, we set the vertices up here to have an array of all the pieces associated with that vertice. So vert vertices number, uh, vertex number zero, for example, will have only just one piece associated with it because it's the upper left-hand corner. But the upper right-hand corner of the first piece, which is vertex number one, will be associated both with piece number zero and piece number one. So therefore it would have an array of two within it. So that's the whole purpose here is that we go through each of the vertexes, we get the pieces that are associated with that vertex, and then we just go through each individual piece. Uh, there is a chance ob obviously that the piece itself uh, could be within that array. In fact, it should be. And if it is, we do skip it. We don't worry about it. We get the vertex info. And that's very important. Now the vertex info will have the vertex piece plus the offset, uh, the plus the uh, the physical offsets of that piece in relationship to the entire board. Which again, just to kind of recap here, that will basically mean on the graphics piece on the vertex info, it gets the it gets the vertex info of the particular image first. Yeah, here it is. It gets the vertex info of the particular image, and then it applies its own offsets top and offset left that it has so it can pass the vertex info back up to the graphics puzzle so that the image itself the data that's passed for the image is in relation to the entire board so that's what that whoops let's get back to cat square so that's what the vertex info is uh, i did find out that it is possible that we could have matched on on a dialogue so i want to first of all make sure that i'm not actually on some sort of, I mean, I'm not dialogue, diagonal. Uh, when I was testing all this and I knew this, this procedure was going to work, I found that you could get two diagonal pieces together and they would snap together because I'm just checking for one vertex. So I had to put, set up an on diagonal variable to be able to say, hey, if you're on a diagonal, you might as well skip it in this particular case. And that's basically what this does here. And the very important thing is this part right here. And that is basically I have a fudge factor of three pixels. So I'm basically saying that if a, if a piece, if two, the two vertexes, the vertex of our, of our piece we're dropping and the vertex of the piece we're dropping it to, if those are, with, are equal to or within three pixels of each other, I consider that a match. Because I don't want to get it obviously right, absolute close to each other. I also don't want it far away, you know, like say 50 pixels or something like that. It just would be ridiculous in that particular case. If they are, then I set up the matching piece and I grab that matching piece. And that's pretty much it. So the matching piece is, is, is set up to automatically be set if it finds a piece that is within three pixels of the two pieces. This will be the vertex info of the piece. The vertex, this particular vertex info is the piece we're being dropped to. The placed piece info is the piece that we are dropping. So that's pretty much it in that case. Once it finds these, that these two vertexes are within three pixels of each other, it says I have a, and they're not on a diagonal, I have a matching piece here. Because since I'm on a square here, if these two vertexes are 
you know, right next to each other, it's pretty much guaranteed that a second vertex or an entire side is going to work. That may not be the case with, a, with another square. So your fine matching pieces routines will be different based upon how you've cut out these particular pieces. In my case, I just have to check for one vertex. So that's really part number two for the patterns. Again, part number one is extraordinarily important that we cut the pieces correctly in the way that we want to cut them and return those pieces. Part number two is we need to be able to find a piece. So now that the puzzle says, you know, hey, you know, find me the matching pieces. And if I get a matching piece, I want to do whatever I need to do. And this is where the third part of the pattern comes in, because if I find a matching piece, I need to mer merge the pieces together. So that's part number three, because the puzzle knows it has pieces there, but it doesn't know what shape they are. So it doesn't know how to find the matches and it certainly doesn't know how to merge them together but the pattern will. And so that's what this large little section does, merges the pattern, merges the two pieces together. So that we get the two, we get the positions. And basically it, it, the first thing we do is we adjust the position of the piece that we, are, that we have dropped. And so basically I don't want to try to put them together with the pieces that are, um, if the piece, you know, if one piece, let's say, is exactly three pixels away from the the dropped the other piece, I don't want to just you know uh, merge everything together with them like that. I adjust the position to basically line these two pieces together so that we have a nice and pretty image. In that case, uh, we determine the matching of the new matched piece. We determine uh, the difference between the old pieces and the new pieces. And then we have to go through each graphic image and make a style adjustment. So what are we actually doing here? We have to go through each of the individual pieces and we're going to set the position of the graphic image of, of each uh, of the graphics image of each of the individual pieces to be able to make an adjustment of the styling of the pieces. And the reason we're doing that is that if you have, and I'll put a graphic up here, if you have graphic piece A and graphic piece B and you merge those two together, the idea here is that we're gonna have the dropped piece get merged in with the piece we're dropping to. So in this case, B would merge in with A. When we merge them in, piece B is going to disappear. But of course the image can't disappear, so we're gonna actually merge now the image, piece B image into piece A. Now the images basically are canvas elements. So piece A, the canvas element was at position zero, zero relative to the piece and piece B, the position was zero, zero again, relative to the piece. But when you merge them together, pieces A image is still zero, zero, but pieces B image should be zero comma the width of the puzzle, which is in my case, 125. So I have to make an adjustment on both the piece and the matching pieces to be absolutely certain that each of the graphics images are adjusted correctly. And I've done that with a, with a simple little set position and, be, and made a calculation of the, where these graphic images will need to be located based upon, where, based upon what the DOM will be between piece and the matched piece. Then we actually merge them together. And that's a very simple thing. I'm taking each graphic image of the piece and I'm moving it into the matched piece. And then I'm adding that graphic image into the piece itself. Uh, I'm setting the new piece position, the new match piece position, because in case it happened to shift or something, I've, I've reset that position. And then what I'm doing is I'm going through the vertexes of each of the old piece and I'm removing that piece from the vertices. Uh, from, from the vertices set because obviously that piece does not exist anymore. I don't want to check for that piece. So I'm taking it out and I'm adding that. I'm, I, the, the, the old piece is still there. So I'm now taking out the, the uh, new, I've, I've basically now taken out the old piece and that's just for the very simple little filter there. No biggie there. So little, little complicated, little mathematical complications here. And this took me a little bit of time to try to figure out the exact sequence of how this got done here. But this, this worked out very, very nicely. And the, the idea here is, again, with the merge pieces, is I want to take the images and keep all the images separate. So when, P, and we'll bring up the graphic again here, when, piece, when I merge in piece A to piece B, piece A is still just going to be one span, but it will have two graphic images in it, or basically two different canvas 
elements into it. So eventually, when I end up with one piece left, I'll have one single span with 16 images in it, and everything's going to come out all nice and pretty. So that's the important step number three for a pattern. So a pattern basically has three really important pieces to it. It has to, be, it has to have a cut, it needs to be able to find all the pieces, and it needs to be able to merge two pieces together. So now that we've got that, let's see if this thing actually works. Most likely not, because I got a sneak of suspicion I forgot some import statements and things like this. I've done a control F5 and I'm looking at my uh, dev tools over here. See, there's dev tools. See what we got. Let's do a select image. Yep, there's my image. Let's do go. We get a blank screen, so we've obviously missed something. Da -da 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 -da. Well, check that out. Cut square is not defined, so it looks like I missed an import inside my jigsaw puzzles. Okay, so the issue I had was a stupid issue. I had misspelled things. Uh, this originally had patterns, and I my uh, information my, my director name was just called Pattern, and I had cut sixteen s q a u r e, which is what I also had in my fwjs in my fwjs jigsaw puzzle uh, repository, which is the one that is the master one that you can all download and take a look at. I will rename those later. So I had also changed the, pad, the name up there. So once I got all that done, you know, the thing is, if, if I had just sat there and just took a look at, you know, my, my NPM dev, it would have told me, hey, you know, hey, you, you got things misspelled, stupid. Just, you know, get it fixed. So I got it fixed. So we should be okay now. So let's do a control F5. Let's do the select image. Just go sample jot JPEG. Go, go. And there's our puzzle pieces. And let's put two of them together. Nope, those two don't go together. I think these two go together. Nope, they don't go together either. Nope, looks like these two might go together. So let's put those two together. Perfect. Hey, did you hear the click? Forgot to tell you that. Yeah, so on um, graphics, uh, where is it? Graphics puzzle. Graphics puzzle, once we, um, we do the drop, we got a sound that we play whenever we drop. If, we, if, if there's been a sound defined, we do a drop. I forgot to show you that. I think that was pretty cute. So we did a drop there. So let's put something, you know, uh, right here at the very end. And oh, that worked like a champ. And let's throw something on the very top. Does that go right there? Nope, doesn't go right there. Let's see. I think it goes right there. I can never remember. Let's try that again. Here we go. That goes together. Hmm. Okay, I know all my code is correct. What the heck could have happened there? Why did it suddenly just go to the very end there? Uh, that's very strange. Note to self, insert CSS. Okay, well, the problem was in this case it had nothing to do with my code except that the CSS was incorrect. Of course, if the CSS is incorrect, that means it didn't know where it's going to put everything, so it just threw things wherever it wanted to, basically. So now let's click on select image. Whew. There's our image. We click on go. There's our screen. Let's throw a couple pieces together here, see if it works. It does. Let's see if it works again. <laughs> It does. Let's try to put something on top here. Nope, those two pieces don't work together right there. I think it works together right there. It sure does. Let's put that. Nope. How about is that put right there? Nope, that doesn't have it may go on that side. Well, actually it did go right here. We just couldn't figure that out very well. Okay, good, good, good. That probably goes on the right right there. And yeah, nope. Does it go on that side? Nope. Does it go right there? Yep, it sure does. And let's throw that piece right there. And this piece right somewhere. Where does that piece go? I'm not sure. I think that piece goes right there. Yep, that piece goes right there. That goes in the middle. That goes right there. Let's go somewhere. I'm not sure. Make sure I get all my pieces out of the way here. Put that one right there. And that one right there. That one goes there. That one does not go there. That one goes there. That one goes there. And that one goes there. And we're done. And that's it. Did we get any errors? 
Well, other than the icons missing, no errors. Did our server get any errors? Nope, it didn't get any errors either. So that basically completes the pattern. So our final video in this particular series here is I'm going to show you the different pieces, the, the different things that I know are still kind of wrong with this uh, system here that, and then what we're going to be needing to do to refactor to get this working. And in fact, what we're going to do in, in part number two of our Jigsaw Puzzle series, which I probably won't start for another couple of months because I've, I've got a tower defense game I'm, getting I'm just getting ready to start uh, working on and I'm gonna probably work on the refactoring of the jigsaw puzzle and of our original racing game uh, both at the same time uh, so it's probably gonna be about another two months or so before we're ready to go with uh, part number two but uh, the next video is going to kind of just go through some of the things I know is incorrect that we're going to have to work at on refactoring and so that will end this particular video Thank you very much for watching. If you like this video, please click on the like button below. If you wish to keep informed about new content, click on the subscribe button. And as always, please leave a comment below. I'd love to hear from you. Again, thank you very much for watching. This is the Virtuoid, aka Mike Smith. We'll see you later.